We've all heard at one point or another about the horrible way some foods are made. Myths about cats being in Chinese food and rat droppings in spaghetti sauce have turned people's stomachs and prevented them from enjoying their food. But what if we really knew about the things that we eat? Ugh and how they're made. Would we go back to eating or drinking them? You decide as we present to you 15 foods you'll never buy again after knowing how they're made. Number 15. The number one alcoholic drink for football fans. The most popular alcoholic beverage worldwide, beer, has been enjoyed for over 7,000 years. Whether it's meeting friends out for a night or watching the big game at home, it's enjoyed by millions. A lot of people think of beer in terms of hops, barley, water, and yeast, but don't consider further additives. So what else might be in your beer? Possibly a substance called isinglass. Many breweries use isinglass. This is a gelatin-like substance that's made by drying and processing the swim bladders of certain fish. Part of a process called flocculation, isinglass is still used because it can make beers appear clearer and brighter. During brewing, yeast will eat its way through the sugar in the brew, creating alcohol, carbon dioxide, and some sediment. When the process is completed, some brewers put isinglass in the brew because it binds any floating yeast particles in a kind of jelly, which then sinks to the bottom of the liquid. Although there is a very small possibility of the isinglass making it into your cup, using anything from animals in the process is enough to make most vegetarians and vegans avoid the beer. Isinglass may make beer seem brighter and clearer, but that can also affect the taste. Beer with haze to it doesn't always mean it's a bad pint, and in trying to make the beer brighter, you could be removing a number of things that help lift its taste. Number 14. Hold the mushrooms. One of the most popular pizza toppings is mushrooms. They are delicious, and there's many ways that mushrooms are prepared. Whether it's stuffed mushrooms, or as a topping on a hamburger, they can be used in many dishes. But how are they actually prepared? Canned mushrooms may contain maggots. If you've ever eaten canned mushrooms, it's likely you've also ingested a maggot or two accidentally. The Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, allows up to 19 maggots and 74 mites in every 3.5 ounce can of mushrooms before they act on behalf of our food's safety. What's worse is that it doesn't stop at mushrooms. They can be found in cans of tomatoes, pasta, or pizza sauce, and even maraschino cherries. Quote, you're probably ingesting one to two pounds of flies, maggots, and mites each year without knowing it. From E.J. Levy, a contributor to the New York Times. If there's any good news to come out of this, it's that maggots are completely edible and safe. However, if you don't want to run the risk of consuming unwanted creatures in your food, you can always get fresh produce and know that you're eating a critter-free meal. Before we go on, do like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or the centipede will crawl on your face while you're sleeping. It's time for today's subscriber pick. If you were to come across this package in the supermarket, what would your immediate reaction be? This photo was taken by a concerned customer in Germany, and they didn't want to buy it as it disgusted them. There are theories that this isn't even meat, but cheese or something else designed to look like a human foot. What do you think it could be? And why do you think a store would sell a product like this? If you found out it was a completely safe and edible product, would you purchase it out of curiosity or run away? Remember to comment down below with the hashtag SubscriberPick and let us know what you think. Now, on to the next topic. Number 13. None for me, thanks. Sometimes when we're ill, a restricted diet will be recommended by a doctor. Often, that diet allows jello, and the sweet flavor helps to reduce some of the cravings associated with the diet. Sometimes we like to make s'mores with roasted marshmallows. The flavor combined with chocolate and graham crackers could be considered iconic in a way. But what are jello and marshmallows even made out of? Both of these foods contain gelatin. Gelatin is an ingredient that's made by taking the hides and bones of pigs, cows, and fish, boiling them, and then drying them. What's made from that process is then treated with a substance that's either strongly acidic or basic. Then it's filtered to remove the collagen or connective tissues. The collagen is dried and ground and becomes gelatin. Contrary to popular rumors, gelatin isn't made from animal hooves, but that doesn't really make it much better. There are benefits to gelatin, however. Gelatin contains glutamic acid, which the body can form into glutamine. 
This substance may help promote a healthy mucosal lining in the stomach and aid digestion. Also, in 2014, a study indicated that glycine, an amino acid in gelatin, may help people with type 2 diabetes to manage the condition. Unfortunately, many gelatin-based foods also have a lot of sugar, so they're not suitable for type 2 diabetics. Number 12. That sauce that no one can pronounce. Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> This sauce is commonly used as an ingredient in marinades and can be brushed onto meat, fish, or chicken while it's grilled, fried, or baked. You can even use it for grilling or stir-frying vegetables. Worcestershire sauce can also be used as a condiment on sandwiches and shellfish or seasoning for salads. So what's inside the famous sauce? Anchovies. True Worcestershire sauce includes ingredients such as onions, molasses, and a lot of seasonings. And the main ingredient is anchovies. But the sauce doesn't contain just any anchovies. It contains anchovies that have been fermenting in vinegar for around 18 months. How this process was discovered is even more disgusting. Leah and Perrins is the first company that made Worcestershire sauce and started in the 1830s. One of the early attempts by chemists Leah and Perrins was so awful that they put it in the cellar and left it there. Months later, when they went to dump it, they tried it first. Why they did, we don't know. But what we do know is that they found that it had mellowed into something pretty delicious. Aside from the fact that many people don't like anchovies, it's harder to think about the fact that it's been sitting in vinegar for a year and a half to make a sauce that they commonly use. Maybe next time they'll think about just adding some seasoning to their steak instead. Number 11. The Easter Bunny brought me what? Would you ever eat shellac? If you don't know what that is, it's the same stuff that's been used to add a clear finish to wooden furniture, along with setting jewels and repairing broken pottery. Shellac comes from the female lacbug. The lacbug drinks tree sap, then secretes a resin that's harvested from where it's deposited onto trees. It's processed, dissolved in ethanol, and then sprayed on whatever needs it. One of the foods that needs it is jelly beans. Coating jelly beans with shellac keeps their insides soft and outsides glossy, firm, and more resistant to melting. Often known as confectioner's glaze, it's also used in other candies, such as Whoppers, Milk Duds, Raisinets, Junior Mints, Mike and Ike's, and some Godiva chocolates. Coffee beans and fresh fruits, such as oranges and avocados, are occasionally coated with it for similar reasons. It takes around 150,000 bugs to secrete enough resin to produce just one pound of shellac. And if there's a silver lining, it's that the resin from the lac bug is not feces. People have confused the word secretion with the word excretion because they sound alike, leading to a misconception that shellac is made from bug poop. Number 10. Sliced or not, no thank you. Sliced bread is one of the most popular store-bought foods. Used for sandwiches and toast, it would be rare to see a house without the greatest thing since itself sitting on a shelf. But did you ever wonder why sliced bread can sit on a store shelf, then on your counter for days without getting moldy? The answer is L-cysteine. L-cysteine is most commonly synthesized from human hair. It can also be derived from animal sources such as goose and duck feathers, swine bristles, and hooves. L-cysteine is created by boiling raw material, feathers or hair, in concentrated hydrochloric acid and activated carbon. This is then followed by electrolysis, a process by which electric current is passed through a substance to affect a chemical change. One of the drawbacks of this approach is the need for a huge amount of concentrated sulfuric acid and water. Aside from the fact that hair, feathers, or hooves can be a part of this, another downside is that the finished product is not kosher and unsuitable for vegan diets. With this knowledge, it could be said that fresh bread from the bakery that you have to slice yourself is the best thing since, well, sliced bread. Number 9. Not using that dye again. If you've ever eaten licorice or raspberry yogurt, you most likely noticed the bright red appearance. Other foods, including maraschino cherries and red velvet cake, also have red dye that's visually appearing. So what is that red dye exactly? Red dye comes from cochineal. Cochineal is made from bugs with the same name. They're oval-shaped insects around 0.2 inches long and are harvested and turned into the natural dye cochineal. The cochineal are small, chubby insects that feed on prickly pear cactus. These are insects that suck plant sap with tiny, piercing mouth parts. They belong to the same order of insects that includes aphids, cicadas, and leafhoppers. The cochineal dye, also known as carmine or natural red 4 on some labels, has been used to color food, textiles, and cosmetics for centuries. The dye was first discovered by the Aztecs, who used it to dye fabrics. 
The bugs are harvested, then dried, crushed, and treated with an alcohol solution to make the dye. Each pound of dye contains around 70,000 bugs. Use of carminic acid in its various forms in textiles and art waned with the development of synthetic dyes in the mid-1800s. However, the pigment continued to color food, drugs, and cosmetics to enhance their appearances. Between 1967 and 2009, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration gradually approved cochineal extract and carmine for such purposes. And these insects still add color to various yogurts, cakes, candies, beverages, and even meats. Some people are allergic to the dyes, which means the FDA requires manufacturers to specifically list cochineal extract when it's an ingredient. Number 8. 10 out of 10 dentists agree on this. Walk into any gas station and you're likely to see rows of chewing gum in front of the cash register. Many people attempting to quit smoking chew gum, and it's not uncommon to see someone playing a sport while chewing away on a piece. But what could possibly be in this product that would make you not want to chew another? The answer is linolin. Linolin is an oily secretion that comes from the sebaceous glands of sheep so that their wool becomes waterproof. It's similar to something humans have called sebum. If you've ever noticed that your skin, particularly your nose, might suddenly feel particularly waxy, shiny, or oily, this is the result of sebum. Linolin is used in skincare products such as lip balm or moisturizers. And even though it's safe, health officials still warn that you shouldn't consume a lot of it because it can cause linolin oil poisoning. Additionally, if you're sensitive to wool, you might have an allergic reaction to linolin. Linolin poisoning has symptoms including vomiting, diarrhea, and rashes. Despite this, the amount of linolin used in chewing gum is pretty negligible, and it's been approved for use in food products by the Food and Drug Administration. It's likely not going to cause any serious health issues in such small amounts, but that may still not be enough to convince you to pick up a pack the next time you stop for gas. Number 7. Avoid the shredded kind Imagine dinner night with your family. You're having spaghetti, and the plate is in front of you. The smell of tomato sauce fills the air, and you're ready to take your first bite. But first, you reach for the sawdust to put on top. Wait, sawdust? Well, if you used grated Parmesan cheese, that might be what you're putting on top of your pasta. Grated Parmesan and other shredded cheeses often contain cellulose. Cellulose is a derivative of wood pulp or plant fibers, which is used to stop clumping and help cheese fall freely through the lid's holes. The cheese also includes potassium sorbate, a preservative that stops mold and extends the shelf life of dried fruits, cakes, and wines. Both are common food additives, and they're safe to eat. Still, lawsuits have been fired over its use, as the product you're purchasing is not pure Parmesan. The company behind Castle Cheese brand was handed a $500,000 fine for mislabeling their cheese, as they added cellulose and cheddar to it, but didn't put it on the label. If you want real pure Parmesan, or any other type of shredded cheese, it's best to buy a brick and shred the cheese yourself. Number 6. Not so diet after all. Soda is a controversial beverage, as it can be harmful if too much is consumed. Even still, people will purchase the diet version of their favorite soda as they believe it's not as bad as regular soda. Drinking the sugar-free version seems like a safe choice, but the artificial sweetener that's been used for decades to replace sugar in these sugar-free products can also have negative side effects. That sweetener is called aspartame. For a long time, there was the belief that aspartame was said to be a carcinogen, and because of that, it scared many people away from anything that contained the additive. Luckily, further research has shown no link between aspartame and cancer. So what's so bad about the sweetener then? Well, despite being in drinks with diet in the name, it can have a negative effect on your weight. During studies, researchers found a link between increased body weight and waist circumference and a regular intake of these sweeteners. Participants in the study showed an increased body weight. But how is this possible? Aspartame may affect body weight by increasing people's appetite, which can lead to greater food consumption. A person experiences the same sweet taste when they consume sweeteners, but the body receives fewer calories than it might otherwise expect. Over time, the body unlearns the association between sweet tastes and calories. This results in high-calorie foods no longer triggering feelings of fullness, which can lead to overeating. We're not saying that you shouldn't enjoy a diet soda from time to time, but the next time you reach for that diet soda, you may want to consider how much you've consumed recently and grab a water instead. Number 5. Well done, please. Hamburgers are enjoyed by many people around the world. There are many ways to prepare one, but what's inside the actual meat may turn stomachs. Pink slime was the center of controversy back in 2012 after ABC's expose of the substance. Basically, it's scrap beef minus the fat. 
After the choicest bits of cattle are removed for steaks and the less desirable parts are removed for hamburger, there's still something left over called trimmings, which are about 80% fat and 20% meat. Companies will heat up these trimmings and take out the fat. This produces beef they claim to be 95% lean. They then inject that product into small pipes along with ammonia gas which makes the meat more alkaline and therefore inhospitable to bacterial growth. Since normal hamburgers that don't contain pink slime are not processed with ammonia, this raises the question of why pink slime needs the extra antimicrobial treatment. According to the company Beef Products Incorporated, or BPI, beef trimmings include most of the material from the outer surfaces of the carcass. As a result, trimmings are more likely to come into contact with bacteria such as salmonella and harmful strains of E. coli. The addition of ammonia solves the problem of bacterial contamination. But if the pink slime in your burger has been properly treated with ammonia, is the ammonia itself a hazard? As many of those opposed to pink slime have pointed out, ammonia is a household cleaner and not fit for human consumption. To which many pro-pink slime advocates have responded that it's also a natural compound that's produced in the body. And ammonia is naturally produced in the body, but as a waste product, ammonia is responsible for the odor of urine which exists in part to ferry ammonia waste out of the body. With that being said, because ammonia is a waste product, the body is also very good at getting rid of it. Also, the US Food and Drug Administration lists ammonia as generally recognized as safe in the quantities used in pink slime. Ammonia is also found in puddings, baked goods, and other products. In a cheeseburger that contains pink slime, the cheese on top may contain more ammonia by weight than the beef patty itself. Number 4. The 4th of July may need a new food mascot. Hot dogs easily have the worst reputation for food and how it's made. When someone noticed that after carving all of the good parts out of an animal, including the ribs and steaks, there was a pile of unappealing stuff left over that really shouldn't go to waste. The desire to use every part of the animal led to the invention of sausage and eventually hot dogs. Whether it's beef or pork hot dogs, most likely, they're made up of a bunch of different animal parts that aren't premium meat. The Food and Agricultural Organization of the United States, or FAO, says this about those parts. The raw meat materials used for pre-cooked cooked products are lower-grade muscle trimmings, fatty tissues, head meat, animal feet, animal skin, blood, liver, and other edible slaughter byproducts. How it's made may turn your stomach. The trimmings, along with other assorted byproducts and various meats, are loaded into giant meat grinders similar to the ones butchers use to grind hamburgers at the grocery store. All of those different animal parts are finely ground at this stage to form a sort of loose, pebbly textured meat mashup. Once all of the components are ground together, the flavor and texture ingredients that help differentiate one hot dog brand from the next are added. For your next 4th of July, we suggest having pizza instead, without canned mushrooms of course. Number 3. Citrus-Based Hazard We've talked about diet sodas. But what about citrus-based beverages? They may contain a product called brominated vegetable oil, or BVO. BVO has been banned from foods in Europe and Japan, but is still widespread in North America. 10% of sodas sold in the United States contain this ingredient, as it helps to keep the citrus flavor mixed into the drink instead of floating to the surface of the can or bottle. So why should you avoid BVO? Health concerns about BVO stem from one of its ingredients, called bromine. Bromine can irritate the skin and mucous membranes, which is the moist lining of the nose, mouth, lungs, and stomach. Long-term exposure can cause neurological symptoms such as headaches, memory loss, and impaired balance or coordination. In the past, these symptoms were seen with excessive use of bromide salts as they were used as sleep medications. These drugs are no longer widely available in the US. Still though, there have been reports of people experiencing memory loss and skin and nerve problems after drinking excessive amounts of soda containing BVO, sometimes over 2 liters a day. While very few people are likely to drink such large quantities, there is concern because bromine appears to build up in the body. Although the FDA originally categorized BVO as safe, the agency later reversed that decision. For now, the FDA continues to allow the use of BVO in small amounts while it performs additional toxicology studies. Just like with diet soda, instead of grabbing that lime-flavored soda next time, grab a water. It'll do you some good. Number 2. Carbonated Sugar It seems that soda, in general, is not very good for you. And once you realize how it's made and what's in it, you'll understand why three variations of the drink appear in this list. 
Aside from aspartame and BVO, many brands of soda also contain phosphoric acid. This same ingredient that gives soft drinks their tangy flavor is also used to remove rust and power fuel cells. Your body does need phosphorus, but too much of it can cause problems. Studies show that excessive phosphorus intake can put you at risk for osteoporosis and heart disease. Calcium and phosphorus work together to form and maintain healthy teeth and bones. However, the minerals need to be balanced in order to be effective. Too much phosphorus can decrease the amount of calcium in your body, leading to bone loss. It can also impair your body's ability to use other minerals, such as iron, zinc, and magnesium. Research has linked high consumption of soda to an increased risk of bone fractures. In one observational study, people who drank soda daily doubled their risk of breaking a bone. And another negative side effect is the effect on your kidneys. Your kidneys help your body get rid of excess phosphorus. Some people with chronic kidney disease may need to monitor the amount of phosphorus in their diet because their kidneys may be unable to remove excess phosphorus. Finally, phosphoric acid is dangerous if you come into contact with it as a chemical substance. The toxic fumes can irritate your skin, eyes, and respiratory system. Did we mention yet that the next time you grab a soda, it might be better to get a water instead? Well, let me mention it yet again. Get a water, not a soda. It's healthier, and you'll thank us. Number 1. Ice cream because of what's in this. I scream, you scream, we all scream for beaver butt. You heard that right. If natural vanilla flavor is on the ingredient list of your ice cream, there is a chance that you may indeed be eating beaver butt goop. Known as castorium, there's a substance described as brown slime that comes from the beaver's castor gland, which is located a short gasp away from its anal gland right there under its big tail. This ingredient is used by the furry creature to mark its territory. But that's not all. It's also so favorably fragrant that we've been using it to flavor ice cream, chewing gum, pudding, and brownies for at least 80 years. The good news is that castorium is difficult to extract, so most manufacturers opt for real vanilla instead. In order to avoid it, make sure your ice cream says vanilla, vanilla extract, or vanillin on the label, and not castorium. Enjoy your vanilla ice cream sundae! And those are 15 foods you'll never buy again after knowing how they're made. Do you have any thoughts or comments? Let us know in the comments down below, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe.